Hello, my Scorpios. Welcome to your freedom reading. And the purpose of this reading is we're going to ask in the creator, you know, what can I do or what can I look at to give myself more freedom? You know, what is blocking the flow of freedom in my life? You know, we look at um, like what's keeping us in this chaotic storm that's going on around us when we can come to the center where there's unconditional love, peace, joy, laughter, and more freedom. What's keeping us on this, you know, cycles like on a merry-go-round where we feel like we're going around and around and getting dizzy in our life and going, what can I do to um, step off of that cycle <clears throat> or to slow that down? So that's what we're going to be looking at. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm... Um, I want to start off just by thanking the Creator for being here with us and being involved in every area of our life and wanting and desiring to be in our thoughts and our feelings and, and experiencing life along with us. And we're so grateful that those moments are also full of the unconditional love that you have for each and every one of us. So we welcome you and we thank you so very much. And we also welcome our large host of beings of unconditional love and light that always are around us, wanting to support and bring through messages for us as well. So we welcome you and thank you for being here too. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to start off by pulling a card here from the archetype cards from Carolyn Miss. And we will see first what the Creator would like our Scorpios to know about your freedom. All right, Creator, what do you want Scorpios to know about their freedom, please? So you got the judge. Um, and so there's light attributes and there's shadow attributes. And so here's the judge in the middle here. And the shadow attributes, this is what is keeping us from our freedom. So there were those in our lives that they offered only destructive criticism. Um, you know, they misused business legal or criminal authority. And then um, when we kind of move that block from our our love from our freedom um, out of the way then the light attributes is what brings in balancing justice and compassion managing the fair distribution of power so what i'm feeling from this so you know um there were individuals in your life that you do you felt like you were always having to walk on eggshells like you always had to walk a very thin line because you stepped out of line they judged you just over and over it's almost like you felt i couldn't do anything right um so i was afraid to even act and it made me um in one sense um very hesitant to get involved and do anything that i wasn't sure that i would do well at and then the other thing it made you a little mini judge yourself because you felt, golly, if I'm going to be under this strict law of all this stuff, that I'm going to make sure everyone else is too. Um, and it was kind of out of a self-preservation place that you were doing it because you're like, I I feel like I'm at the low end that I'm, you know, if, if um, the earth said we need one less person on the earth, they would cut me because I'm at the bottom. So you needed to be able to judge yourself and compare yourself to others to go, at least I'm not that, at least I'm not doing that, at least I'm not doing that. And you may not have vocalized it, but you definitely had all that in your mind to be able to just to make it another day um, and to at least, you know, feel like you deserve to breathe another day. So there's this big judge feeling, you know, around all this. Um, and it also flowed over to your beliefs about the Creator. Because when your mother um, and or father or people in authority are so judgmental towards you in a way, that we automatically as children put that on the Creator. We put that on, you know, God or whatever you feel your, uh, feel your higher power is. <clears throat> but those beliefs in parent... Um, automatically transfer over to belief in, in Creator. So, um, 
this whole transition of understanding that you are unconditionally loved. No conditions. Nothing you can do to lose it. Nothing you can do to gain more of it because you have it all right now. You have that unconditional love of the creator of all things. So that is what's going to help um, bring you some freedom is really being at that, um, you know, that fork in the road of do I believe the creator has conditional love or do I believe the creator has unconditional love? <clears throat> if the king and queen of all things loves you unconditionally, who cares what the rest of the kingdom um, is expressing to you because the one in charge Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right, we're also going to pull a card here from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, and we'll get more information on what the Creator wants you to know about your freedom. Scorpios, Scorpios. All right, Creator, what else do you want Scorpios to know about their freedom, please? Got the land in between. That's number 40. So um, I, I love this. Um, I'll, I'll read from the book here in a sec too, but I just love this that <clears throat> um, I have this, the grass is only always greener on the other side, right? It's like um, you're standing in the middle judging, judging which side is the correct one. Um, but in the middle, there's this bright, shining star to this place. I, almost, I just now saw this looks like a rabbit to me, um, which is, a, um, for me, like a new birth, a new, um, a new path. Hippity hoppity down a new path is what I'm hearing. They're being kind of funny. <clears throat> um, today <clears throat> but I just really feel you know that's what judgment does is it it determines and contrasts between two different worlds um, black and white but there's this in-between world that's the the place of gray and um, you can live there and allow everyone to be who they are and um, there doesn't have to be um, you know a my way or the highway mentality um, and you get to free yourself from all that those old rules those little conditional rules of love that have been piled upon you since you were born and they're um, come from so many different people and they're even contradictory to each other which is very confusing for us right we're like well when i'm with that person that's right but when i'm around that person this is what is right um, and so you get to release yourself and just be you and live in, in this land in between. Let me grab the energies here. So the energies of this card are about being between worlds, learning to be okay while at the threshold of what was and what will be. A time of waiting and evolving gray areas, something essential yet still in development, and a metamorphosis. <clears> that says you're in a process of change. You know that you were called to it and can no longer be who you were, but you aren't sure what the next experience of your life will be. You are in between what was and what could be in a pupil stage, like during the metamorphosis of the caterpillar into the butterfly. However, you just can't skip the messy parts. You have to endure the unknown and uncomfortable as you reinvent yourself. You know, like a caterpillar, actually, it dissolves pieces of itself to become what it really is meant to be. A caterpillar is just a butterfly walking around um, in a caterpillar suit until it goes through its transformation. It says, the thing is, you're not quite there yet. You have one foot in the past and one foot, um, okay, you have one foot in the past, even if you're ready to shed that version of yourself and become something new. You must start redefining who you are in the context of your question. What do you believe is possible when you get to the next place? Can you explore this stage of your evolution to get to know yourself better? 
The process in between worlds is where things get really interesting. You learn how to manage your fear, how to stay present in the now, how to see in the dark. You absorb the lessons offered to you with grace because you can't go any faster. <laughs> This is a real test of emotional fortitude, patience, trust, and humility. Once you've made this no man's land your home, it will be a part of you. Then whatever was set in motion comes to life. This is what you've been waiting for. When you look back, you will grow to love the place in between, for that is where you were reborn. Yep, so the rabbit reborn. <laughs> Beautiful. We're also going to pull a card here from the Path of the Soul Destiny cards. Let's see what else the Creator would like you to know. I know this is a general reading, but um, 40 jumped out to me just now and I heard a message, um, you know, about, <laughs> it's like, midlife crisis um you know you're you're doubting who you were you're questioning you know all these things were supposed to make me happy and i don't feel that way and you know it's releasing all the supposed to shoulds need tos and have tos and and finding that freedom and um you know all these things like by 40 this is everything i was supposed to have and who i was supposed to be and they're just like yep that's a lot of those judgments um, that you have against yourself and you could let them go and be who you want you to be not all those supposed to's all right creator what else do you want scorpios to know about their freedom please okay <clears throat> you got number 28 i love all the green these fractal images here i'll let you see what you see and i'll read from the little book here but i love the green energy here um yeah, like olive, olive green, a lot of green, a lot of green, a lot of heart chakra stuff going on here. <clears throat> and this is dreaming. So your dreams, like your expectations, right, are playing a very important part in both your waking life and your spiritual development. The answers you seek to your deepest inner questions are being answered. You're receiving messages and advice through the dream time. So take serious note of all your dreams. Um, you maybe even do a dream journal, right? There is much being given to you from the astral realms. This is also a call to strengthen your intuitive connection through meditation. Take time each day to meditate as this will aid you in remembering and clarifying your dreams. So, you know, definitely um, pay attention to your dreams. Um, your, your mind um, and your spirit will use that downtime where um, you're not judging yourself so harshly to help bring um, things in a calm way up to you, a compassionate way to you, in a way that you can process it without having your defensive mechanisms um, kick in um, so extreme. If you ever wake up from a a dream frightened is this because your your soul took it to the edge where your fight or flight kicked in and it woke you up because you felt unsafe and that's okay it's the way your body and your soul and your spirit um, work through to help you um, move that blockages um, to the side so it brings things to our face especially when we avoid them during waking hours and we're like nope nope not going to deal with it it's like okay You'll fall asleep eventually. We'll deal with it then. <laughs> also, gonna pull some cards here from the Light Sears deck. So we'll look for new information or validation or confirmation regarding your freedom. All right, Creator, what else do you want Scorpios to know about their freedom, please? Okay. Any others? Okay. And last pass, any others? Yep. <clears throat> All right. 
<clears throat> so, excuse me, you got the Ten of Cups, which is a beautiful card because this is like, um, cups are emotions, this is emotional fulfillment, and this is almost like your dreams come true. It's like you've, um, rainbows and all these are full and overflowing and whether it's children or love or whatever's happened in life, um, it's just saying that yes, your dreams can come true. Um, but I really feel it's about understanding your dreams. You know, um, that's what this was talking about. That's two and eight, which is 10. And this is the 10 of cups too. So it's just this reinforcing of like, yes, you can dream, you can hope for things, but the caution that comes to, um, uh, you know, through intuitively on this is just to make sure you are dreaming what you want, not what you think you're supposed to want. And so that's really this um, spot that you go through in this in-between world when you look at um, all my life I've had these drives or these things that I've been striving to have because I was told this is what you want. And then when you, um, either before you get what you want, what you think you want, um, you question it and go, is that really what I want? Or is that what, you know, my parents wanted for me or what society says um, I should have or supposed to be in order to be lovable and acceptable or successful? Um, <clears throat> or you get those things and you're like, um, I don't feel anything. I don't feel this fulfillment like I thought I was going to feel. Um, which brings us to the Nine of Pentacles, which is, um, you know, Pentacles are your external world. And this is kind of like the, I want to say like a wish card as well, where you get what you, what you wanted. You know, you get things in life. And it's like, I love this picture because there's all this fruit, you know, these are the abundance that's happening. And it's like, well, what is right? What's ready for me? And I love this um, deck because it has this white, ring, white winged creature, which is um, like representation of me of the spirit world saying, here, pick this. And so if you're not sure <clears throat> of what your dreams are, what you really want, or what you think is going to fulfill you, um, and... Um, or what you want to wish for in life, then don't be afraid to reach out. You know, you've got all these stars and all these orbs around here in this picture too, um, which shows you when you're in this middle ground and not sure, and you're moving from the past into something new. Um, you have all that support. You have this large group of beings of unconditional love and light on the other side that love you unconditionally, that want, to support you and aid you in whatever you want them to help with. <clears throat> so you got your angels and your guardian angels and your spirit guides, your loved ones who've already gone to the other side, your ancestors, you know, a whole host of um, other beings too that we may not even be aware of. Um, but they are all here to help you. So don't be afraid to ask. Oops, sorry about that. Um, ask. Earthquake. <clears throat> Yep, and you got the Six of Pentacles here too, um, which is all about um, <clears throat> giving and receiving. And um, again, this is this point, and, and it's interesting that, um, you know, you have all these judgments about what it means to be a giver and what it means to be a receiver. And... Um, you know, there's kind of two things. One one side of it is that the giver is the person that's in control. So I must be a giver because receivers are needy and uh, weak and they don't have the power because they need us. And so we, in order for us to be feel safe, we need to be a giver and we don't want to receive from others, right? And what I love about this deck is that if you just um, turn it to the side like this, it becomes an equal thing and you can even see the um there's this infinity symbol here which represents the cycles of giving and receiving and that um it is a blessing to be able to receive from others it's a blessing to that other person because you know how wonderful it feels when you're able to give to others without expectation and just from your heart right um, and when we don't allow others to do that, then we, you know, um, are cheating them of being able to experience that. 
The other thing, because um, I was saying there's two things, the other thing about receiving is that I'm not worthy to receive. You know, I've judged myself so harshly, I don't deserve any um, thing wonderful in my life coming from the outside. I don't deserve to have those things, you know, come to me because, um, you know, if there's other people that are more worthy than me and they, they deserve that, you know. And what I love is when it comes to this feeling of lack and believing in your abundance and your success and, you know, all that, we, we think that all that comes from external people, you know, like um, having my own business and, you know, it's like, um, in the, you know, during situations that happened over this last year, I, a lot of people are struggling. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to survive because other people, you know, know who's gonna be able to afford readings and whatever. And um, and during that time, it's like the creator was just showing me, he's like, hey, you know, everything comes from me. I'm the source of abundance. All the humans in the world are the middleman. They're the ones that bring it to you. They're like the shipping company, but I'm the provider and I know how I'm going to get it to you. I know which shipping company to use to get it to you in the timing that I want to get it to you. So you don't have to fret about, you know, um, being worthy of the external people or the ability of the people because the Creator loves us unconditionally. So the Creator, um, you know, just totally on board of, yeah, you definitely deserve this. I'm giving this to you. I'm sending this to you. I'm going to have this happen for you. And um, so we can trust in that. So, <clears throat> and then lastly, yep, we got the magician. And the beautiful thing about the magician, especially in this picture, is showing that, um, and you have all the, I think it's in this one here. Yeah, you've got all these symbols here. Um, all these triangles are symbols of all the four elements, which are the four, you know, pentacles, cups, and swords, and wands, um, earth, air, fire, and water. You have all the elements you need in your life to create. And, you know, the power comes from you to be able to um, have everything happen in your life that you want to have happen. Um, and... You know, it's called the manifesting, and, and the biggest thing that I, I look at that, and it's coming back to this, what are you really wishing? What are you really wanting for your life? You know, when we are trying to manifest something that subconsciously and inside we really don't want, then it doesn't happen because the universe knows and the universe, you know, this is all water. It's some our subconscious as well it knows what we truly want and that's why it's always bringing us stuff and we're like what the heck is this i didn't order this um but our subconscious inside is like siri it's like our subconscious is saying things and ordering things for us and we something arrives and we're like where the heck did that come from and it's like well um there's our higher self is bringing us things that we want to experience here even when our human side of us is um you know oblivious to it happening you can also see on the the infinity symbol on the hood here representing this flow um, this cycle of um, giving and receiving and you know one of the blocks here that we're talking about that um are keeping us from our freedom um, really seems to be coming down to that um, w feeling worthy to receive um, and only feeling like you can give because there's this block that if you're always giving um, and you don't stop then there um, anything trying to come in to give to you um, it can't because you're constantly give 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 no 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 I don't want to receive give 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 you know it's like give wait receive give wait receive give you know and so that's that cycle um i'm here for you but i really uh you bring into your life um there's so many possibilities in in this the magician for me you know they have the the wand um and the wand 
is like sending so many um, poss possible seeds out into the ground, right? And depending on what fertile ground it lands on and what it grows, um, that lands where your soul wants in your life, you know? It almost looks like this, where you're sending out all this stuff and it's landing in this swirl and what you truly want in your heart, um, what your spirit and higher self want for your life to experience for you, for your highest experience, for your highest vibration of love is what takes root and what grows, right? So um, really getting in tune with what you truly want deep inside, you know, not what you think you're supposed to, um, and all this, you know, the judgments that you have of these are all the things that need to happen when you start to um, really let go of all those conditional love laws, then um, that's where your freedom comes. So I'm going to pull a few last cards here from these little chakra love cards. See what the final message for the creator is here for our Scorpios. What else would you like Scorpios to know, creator? Any others, please? Okay. So the first one, <laughs> abundance. The world is abundant when you choose to see it that way. <laughs> so like I was saying, um, you know, of course, this is all about giving and receiving. Um, so, you know, that belief about abundance um, really has to go with your viewpoint, right? How you see it, how you um, look at it. And I love looking at it as, you know, um, the creator is abundant um, and the world's going to bring it to me. And then you have fertility. Let your life burst forth from the seeds of creation. It's like I was talking about with seeds of creation there. <laughs> So let your life well for us. And I just really feel, you know, once you question your dreams and what you want and, and really look at it and see that it's not what you think you're supposed to have by what's been, um, I feel like the word pushed on you by, you know, either family or society or, you know, teachers, there's this you feel like this is who I'm supposed to be. This is what I've been told all my life. And if I'm not that, then I'm nothing. It's like question that. Because um, the reason these things aren't growing, like I said, is because it's not really what you want, what your higher self wants. So if something's not growing, it's really because it's not what you really want. And you can look at that and, and question that. And then lastly, you've got calmness. To calm your monkey mind, do not feed the animal. <laughs> um, and the animal um, kind of represents our, you know, our human side, our, our fear ego. Um, and so, you know, when we feed the, the judgments, when we feed all that negativity um, about us, all the, you know, we're um, sentencing, sentencing ourselves for all these judgments of all these things that we failed and it's like yeah don't you don't have to focus on that monkey mind and that animal fight or flight don't feed the animal you know feed your spirit feed what you do want not what you um, don't have because if you focus on the lack um, and then that's what grows when you focus on your abundance and what you do have and you have gratitude around it then that's what grows so I really love this for you. So just really, you know, I know we co uh, covered a couple of things, but I just really feel the, the main focus on here is this abundance, you know, your judgments on your abundance, this um, strong, strong feelings of your worth and just how much you were judged. I mean, that you couldn't feel you um, could do anything right. Um, and that is the place of, coming to the ground saying that there's no right or wrong there there's it's a whole sea of gray um, and if you feel something is wrong um, or you failed at something question that who says that that is the right way to go who says 
um, that I failed. And when you really get to the root of it, um, that's where you find this beautiful place of gray where um, everything is of love. Um, you know, everything is of light. It's just a different shade of light, right? Well, just to know as you go through this beautiful journey here, just know that every second of every day you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things. And I love you too. We'll talk to you soon. You take care now.